rye bread and like <gasps> coleslaw and turkey. I don't, yeah, it reminds me of something like, or like my grandma's house or a bris. A bris. <laughs> I love rye bread. I watched that up close and personal. And? The whole thing. I was not phased. I was fine. Annie's really upset about it. I'm sure. About what? No, <laughs> the bris. Oh. The circumcision. <laughs> It really, I didn't find it like. Why is it that better that it happens in a hospital? Mm -hmm. I think it's the same. Uh, well, I mean, different techniques actually are used apparently according to the moil. <laughs> Who's like, you know, trained or whatever. Oh, is that what the one. person is called? Mm -hmm. I thought rabbis did it. No. Oh. No, we talked about it last night actually. It's going to be an interesting ongoing conversation. He really sees it as mutilation. Yeah. Even I would. though he has it, had it done. And I don't see it that way. He oh. said, you know, I can why understand why you don't, why you think it's different than other kind of mutilation that happens to women in other countries, but I don't think it's different. Would you care or want, you know, your son to look like you in that regard? And he was like, that doesn't bother me. You know, if I decided, if we decided not to, then I would just tell him, like, this is the way you were actually born. I'm the one that's weird. Or, you know, until you, like, got to an older age where I could explain it more. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boys are funny with their penises. <laughs> They're what with them? They're funny. funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's, like, a whole other, like... It's a whole other thing. Yeah. Like, it's not like an arm. Like, you don't talk about your arm in the same way at all. <laughs> not you. <laughs> men that I've met. It's like... But you don't talk about your vagina like your arm. He really liked sucking on the cloth dipped in wine. Mm -hmm. That like quieted him the most. Mm -hmm. Hey, what's that, uh... <laughs> what's the... The holiday. The holiday that I want to go to. The Purim. Purim. I want to go to that. Why? I'm not familiar with Purim. Mm -hmm. That's the straight alcoholic one, right? <laughs> That's what a Rachel described it as. Well, one aspect of the holiday, so it's this story um, about the Jews having this, whatever. It's like the same story. There's people against us. Somebody, you know, triumphs and the Jews are saved and then you celebrate. Right. Basic story. Can I have the knife, Lily? Mm -hmm. And on this particular holiday, in that context, you're supposed to drink so that you get so drunk that you can't tell the difference between the bad guy and the good guy. Because it's like, it's oh. this holiday where like everything is hidden and everything mm. is kind of turned upside down and um, it comes at the point of the year that's directly opposite from Yom Kippur, which is like the holiest day of the year right. in terms of atonement and Purim. So Yom Kippur it means like the day that is like Purim. Drink to the point where you can't tell the difference between the good guy and the bad guy. <laughs> a lot well, of alcohol. They, <laughs> and you dress up and like that's a, a lot of alcohol. That's a big part of it. It's like a dress up holiday. What happens when you get drunk? Like are you having orgies and like being crazy or are you like giving over Torah and like dancing with your friends? It's kind of like a I heard one rabbi explain it as like a kind of a litmus test of like where you're at. Like when you get so drunk that like you don't really have all your faculties, like what are you really like?